Ladies and gentlemen, the dawn of a new era is upon us. The year 2012 has shown itself. And that can only mean that today is the K&K Show, episode 25. And I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. And I would like to be the first to welcome you to the first episode of the new year. Now, first things first, while I was gone on break, I noticed we hit two major landmarks. One being over a thousand subs to the actual Can Kale Show. That is awesome, guys. Thank you so much for being willing to sub and be notified whenever I make a new episode of this so I can teach and maybe, maybe entertain you as well. And also, you gotta check this out. Whoa, look at that number! 115,000 views on my DA. Man, that is crazy. So, thank you all for going there, checking out my stuff, and yeah, Twitter, and 178, yeah. Facebook, 220, but that's beside the point. Moving on, today we are going to be doing a tutorial on putting down your base color, using special brushes, and masking. And speaking of masking, did you guys notice the paint, the new fresh coat of paint on the room behind me? Yes, that was quite fun. I actually had a chance to finally paint my room the way that I intended it from the beginning over the break. But you know what really bothers me? On these commercials where they show like the family getting together and like and painting the walls and having a great time, and using the roller, you know. It's only like that for like the first five minutes. After that, you're, you're doing this and like really pushing into the freaking wall and your wrist is hurting. You almost want to kill yourself just to relieve the pain. And that continues for probably about another 16 hours. But as you can see, I'm still alive and we actually got the job done with the help from my brother, Fat Feeds. So, yes, thank you to him and yes, I'm very happy that that is all done. But, yes, back to the tutorial. Today we will be doing that tutorial, obviously, with our beloved treant friend, Maokai. And I've gone ahead and composed the time lapse of me creating the lines. And we will go into that right now. So, I'm just going to kind of sit back a little bit, just kind of watch this, and I'll let you know what was kind of going through my mind. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to have like a very vertical composition on this one. Kind of with him holding up his little sapling and then the lantern over top. And uh, d really like throwing like these really cool diagonal perspective lines like up the middle of it and just kind of create a cool comp that way. And uh, I've had the idea to do this for a while. A, because Maokai is one of my favorite champions and B, it's going to be like a really cool... Um, like, experiment with color. I want to throw in some really cool colors on it. So, basically all this is is just going to be showing you the lines. I just want to get this part out of the way so we can go right into the masking techniques and throwing in the colors. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Oh, drawing this sapling was so... or this sapling. Drawing this sapling was so freaking annoying because it's so simple there, but Every time I went and refined it, it, it ended up not looking the right way. I wanted it to be kind of like cute and precious looking. But every time I started adding more detail to it, it started looking kind of ugly. So uh, yeah, I just I, I figured simplicity is the way to go with the sapling, the cute sapling. So um, originally the way that I had this envisioned was, yeah, it's Maokai from the side, and he's kind of pressed up against the side of the image. So his body is kind of flowing off of it. And we kind of get like these cool uh, shapes of his arm coming down and kind of creating the rest of the composition to kind of frame him a little bit. And uh, yeah, if this all goes well, then maybe I will print it out, frame it, and put it on my wall. You know, I want to have like one painting in here that is actually my work. And then the rest of it I'm actually contracting from other artists that I really like. Because I love having art in my room. 
but yeah, I don't want to be like one of those artists that only has paintings that he's done in his room. What's the point of that? You know, it seems kind of silly, I guess. <laughs> so not not that I'm dissing anybody who does that, but just for me, I I mean, I see enough of my art as it is anyway. I'd rather look at other people's art that I really like. And speaking of that. Uh, I wanted to say thank you all for sending your stuff into the Facebook over the break. Like, really, that's awesome to go in there and see everybody's everybody's awesome art and stuff that they say that I help them with. Uh, it's really, really awesome. And, and very, it, you say that I inspire you, but really that inspires me too. So please keep sending stuff into the Facebook. All right. So as you can see, the lines are all done and our mask is ready to go. And that's what we're going to be jumping into right now. Close this baby. Close. Oh. <laughs> hmm. That wasn't the actual window. It was an, it was an illusion. All right. So here we go. Checking the time. Checking the time. All right. So we will conclude about 10 minutes from now. So the first thing we're going to be doing is I'm going to take you through and show you exactly how I just did the lines and the mask. So the lines, as I've shown you before, are all on their own layer. And when I draw them, I usually like to work in a little bit of a lighter gray, so that way it just, it just appears softer and it's a little easier to work with. And then when I'm done with it, I'll darken it to the point of where it's close to black. I'll hit OK. Then all the colors that I'm going to be laying down right now are actually going to be behind this. Remember, it's sort of like an animation stencil or an animation cell. So, see, they throw down that mask, and basically it's just me going in, and I'm taking a brush, but not just any brush. It has to be a hard brush, like this. I'll show you exactly what I do here. So you've got your hard brush, right? But this is what I want you to avoid. When you're throwing in the mask, don't, like, see how it's, there's still the opacity filter on it? Make sure you take that off, otherwise you're going to be pressing really hard with your wrist over and over again. It's going to cause you to get freaking carpal tunnel. So go into your brush properties right here and unclick other dynamics while you're doing this because what that'll do is it'll automatically put down 100% opacity and you don't have to press hard. And then when you're done, just go back, put it back on. If that is your preference. So I just did that for that arm, that for that arm. And now, the cool thing is, is now that you've got all those masks done, you can start throwing color over top of it. That's what we're going to do right now. So the original idea I had for this is I wanted a, a bright background, probably like a gradient. Oh, hey, that's kind of nice. Hmm, it's not bad. Not bad. Let's mess around with a couple of those. Yeah, that one looks good. So a quick gradient on the background. And now, what I want to be doing here is actually working with a lot of warm colors for Maokai, and then having the shadows turn like really blue, and then have a secondary light source coming from underneath that's almost like a teal blue. So let's begin with that. So you have your masks right here, right? See, this is our Maokai masks or Maokai mask. Throw on another layer over top of it, and now what I want you to do is right click this layer right here and hit create clipping mask. And what that's going to do is grab whichever color you want to use, like this, yeah. And then what that's going to do is when you choose your brush, oh whoa, what the, oops, when you choose your brush, and you go to paint over it like this. Check it out. Like, eh, just painting along, painting along. Oh, oh, what's that? I can't go out of lines. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's what that does. When you choose Create Clipping Mask, this layer right here that's over top of this one, it'll say, okay, I'm not going to paint over what you've painted before. So it basically automatically makes it so you can't paint out of lines. And it's freaking awesome. I love using that. So, yes, I highly suggest doing that. Lighten this up a little bit. Now, moving on to the arm, let's do the same thing here. 
create a layer over top of it. Create clipping mask. And this arm is going to be a little bit more purple and dark. Because, as we learned in the perspective and atmosphere daily, the one where we were drawing rocks and Roger, we learned that the closer things are to you, the darker their shadows will appear. So, the closer objects I like to paint darker. And the further away the objects are, I like to paint a little bit lighter. So now we'll move on to the final mask, which is the back arm, the gimpy arm. Create clipping mask. And we'll take this red, make it a little lighter, and mix some yellow with it, because that's our atmosphere, and that's what happens. Bam! So now you can see very clearly, oh, that arm's closest to us, oh, that's the mid-ground, and that arm is way back there. So now we have the basic composition for our Maokai drawing. Now we can start moving on to the fun part. And that is basically any layer that you create over top of your clipping mask is going to, oh, I thought it would automatically do. But I guess you can, you can put it back or not. Like, you can continue to clipping mask over top of them, but um, it's actually not really that big of a deal if you don't want to. Unless you're going to do this. <laughs> Create a clipping mask. Then, when you're lighting things, I like to personally use a soft brush because it just creates those nice gradients. And basically, the way I look at it is it's letting the computer do the work for you. And what I mean by that is, like, say um, that light's going to be hitting his tree bark, and it's going to create a saturated orange like this, right? And when you use a soft brush, basically what you're saying is... Basically what you're saying is... Okay, I want you to calculate basically what's going to happen with that orange and when it goes to the the desaturated red because this is fairly desaturated I think yeah it's fairly you could even kick it even darker or even less saturated because rule of thumb when I'm doing stuff I like to go I like to go saturated light or like saturated local which is kinda like the true color then the shadows become even more saturated and then when they go into like deep shadows I like to desaturate them so it's almost like a pattern of saturated, or no, it's a pattern of desaturated, saturated, desaturated. And what that means is, so all these shadows down here are desaturated, whoops, like that. Then right here, this is your saturated shadow, right here. Then as you head to the local color, it'll also be fairly saturated which is almost like the true color, whatever you, you want to call that. The true color. Let your true color show. Then, as you come to the final little bit, desaturate it. Oh, whoops. Like that, kind of. There we go. So you can see right there. Desaturated, saturated, desaturated. And always be sure to hue shift as well. Hue shifting makes it look really cool. That means like pushing a little bit more blues. Blues and purples. Very good. Very good. Very good. On some more of that. And whoop! See what happens when you take that and just like slap it there? It kind of washes it out, makes it look kind of ugly. Gotta have a good transition between those. There we go. So that's pretty close to what I'm looking for. There we go. There you go!
we can see what's happening there. Now let's do the same thing on the arm that's closer to us. And I actually figured out, like, you can just use the same mask, or if you want to just do layers above the old mask, just to be careful with it, um, you can do that too. But for this one, I'm just going to use the same mask. So you just go back in, and let's say, okay, we're going to go red, saturated, for our light source along the edge here. Then we're going to push it closer to that local color, the true color. Let's go about, let's go there. Let's go. Oh, let's go there. And now to the highlight, which will be desaturated. Whoop. A little too much. There we go. Very good. Very good. And if it still looks a little bit too like light, remember I usually try to keep stuff as dark as possible up in front, or at least darker shadows. So throw those shadows back in wherever you deem necessary. That looks pretty good. Now, look at how dark and saturated the shadow is. Let's desaturate it, kick it way into the blue. Way into blue. Almost like a gray blue. Let's put that underneath. See what that does? It, it makes it look really like awesome because your eye just sees that full transition of the spectrum and from saturated to desaturated. And it looks nice. Come wherever you want. Just kind of go back in and throw in a little bit more shading. Core shadow area. If you know what that means. If you know what I mean. Some more of that there. Oh, keep hitting that thing. I keep hitting it! There we go. That is cool. Go back in, throw some shadows here. Let's throw a shadow right underneath his face so we can see clearly where his face ends and his shoulder thing begins. Because he does have this shoulder patch, or shoulder patch, shoulder strap. And a silver thingy. Silver loop belt hoop thing. So because silver reflects whatever light is thrown on it, just bam, throw that on there. And then the other side will be like that. Close enough. Now, a little bit more, like to show that the shoulder is coming back up and catching some light, take this light from his face, throw it right in there. See what that does? It brings that shape out. Shows that, hey, oh, there's, there's something going on there. What's going on there? Come closer and I'll show you. All right, so you can kind of see the beginnings of our tree taking place here. Unfortunately, it looks like we lost a little bit of the clarity of this arm. And these are things that you're going to run into while you're doing these paintings anyway. So, that is just going to have to be all shadowed to keep that clarity of the arm. Or, we'll have to throw in some more lightness behind it. See what that does. Yes, that helps quite a bit. And a lot of those things you can still uh, solve once you begin the painting phase because the lines are still not working to our advantage because they're all one hue. But you can see basically how I start throwing in these colors and how I go about choosing them. 
one more thing before we finish this tutorial up. I do want to show you the secret button that takes you to the cool brushes so you can start making uh, your awesome um, start making some awesome texture on your drawings. Let's move the thing right here. There we go. Whoop. So you can see basically that's how you kind of start everything. And you got this little thing here. Also, Maokai's eyes. Just throw those in really quick. And then when all is said and done, the most important thing is that you make sure that you can see that silhouette of Maokai himself. So that is a pretty good start and to show you how exactly I begin lighting my scenes. Now to show you the secret button. The secret button can be found by going to your brush setting, clicking down on this arrow here, and that tiny little button right there. That's the secret one. You go right down to wet media brushes. It'll say replace the current brushes. Say okay, that's cool. And then bam, look at all these things, man. Where did these come from? These are amazing. All these things and all of the other presets will give you special little custom brushes that you can use. And each of these brushes has like a different like scatter thing on it or whatever. And these basically can be used to create texture on your drawings. Uh, I don't use them that much except for maybe when I'm painting a background. Like I can kind of come in here and like kind of pull some of these edges up and add some texture back here. And see so when you get close you can see that this isn't just like a, a soft brush. Or you can use like these ones here. You know, you can kind of splotch stuff down like that. There's one in here that I really like, one of my favorites. I think it might be. It's not that one. Not that one. This one? No! There's one in here that's very convincing. I think it might be this one. Yeah, yeah, this one right here. See, look at that. Look at that texture on that. See, I love going like into my backgrounds and stuff, or just like little spots, and I'll kind of just throw this brush in there to create texture. And that is very fun. And when you're all done having fun with your little custom brushes, you can set them back to the defaults by clicking that same button and hit Reset Brushes. And it goes back. So with all that out of the way, hopefully that shows you a little bit more of how I begin a painting. I mask it all off, and then I start throwing in the colors. And now you can reach your secret brushes via the tutorial I showed you. And yeah, hopefully that sheds a little bit of light onto how you can begin your paintings a little bit and keep it clean and a little less hassle, I guess, with like going out of the lines and stuff. So with that out of the way, we will move on to our question to the audience. And that is none other than, what is your New Year's resolution? I want to know it because, yes, I, I want you to post it down there because I want to see how many people post similar things or completely different things, way crazy things. And uh, yes, I will tell you mine. Mine is one, to get more sleep because I've been up late way too many times playing League of Legends. And B, I'm trying as many times throughout the day to use the word abundance. And I'll tell you why. I am a big fan of mind over matter type stuff, or positive thinking, and those, those types of things I feel can bring greatness into your life or make you at least a happier person. So I've chosen to try to say abundance in every chance that I can, even if it's something that's totally like stupid or inappropriate, like, oh wow, there's an abundance of traffic today, or man, I have an abundant amount of problems I need to solve, you know, but the key is in that word right there. So yes, if that is any help to you, yes, it always helps to be positive. So I would encourage you to say abundance as well. So you find things that you're grateful for, find things that you're happy with, things that you have more than enough of, things that you don't have to worry about and uh, just say that word and see, see what happens. Now before we leave, I want to urge you 
anything that this tutorial helps you with, please post it to the Facebook because I want to see more pictures up there. And I love the participation that's going on there right now. So I want to see more of it. And with that, uh, yes, also subscribe. Follow me on Twitter because I can update you on when these new episodes are coming out. And I believe that's it. So that wraps up k and Kale Show episode 25, ladies and gentlemen. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm Ken Lafferty, and I will see you guys next time.